the Lord has put things in the earth to teach us about him. Water. Water takes different forms. Water can be a liquid, it can be a solid in the form of ice, and it can be gas. Three separate distinct forms, yet all water. And he says, I'm using this to teach you about me. I'm the father of creation. I'm the son of redemption. And I'm the Holy Ghost in keeping you in the earth. But I'm God. Not three separate gods. Not God the father. God the... I'm just water. I'm God. I'm the spirit. I move. Anything with more than one head is a freak, including God. James chapter 2 verse 19, James chapter 2 verse 19. You believe there is one God? You do well. <laughs> the devils believe also and they tremble. You can't believe there's one God and not do something about it. Even the devil does something about it. Let's stand our feet and let's give one more great worship tonight. Would you do that with me? Let's give praise to God for the things that he has done. We are victorious in Jesus Christ. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
mighty, mighty God. Words cannot express how mighty he truly is. All I have to do is just go back down memory lane. Remember many years ago of how he stretched out his mighty hand and saved me from committing suicide on the bridge. It was an unbelievable day that I ran into a mighty God. And it's because of that mighty God the reason why I stand here today. So when they say, Lord, you mighty, something get a hold of me. Oh, I wish I had a few people can testify about how good and how mighty he is. He's excellent. He's wonderful. He's marvelous. He's magnificent. I'm so excited tonight to preach. So glad to be here with my pastor. I'm so glad to be here with all of you. This is my family and I'm so glad to be home. Amen. Amen. I try not to keep you long tonight. Of course, pastor did give me my liberty, but I am mindful of the time. Pastor, I just want to say I honor you. I think the world knows that because I talk about you everywhere. Everywhere. We love Pastor, love all of the ministers. I wish Gentry was here in Andrew, but I understand that. Well, Lamar Show, you're one of our pastors. I love you. Such a great spirit. Ryan Franklin, all of them. I just thank God for them. I've seen them grow, and their leadership is bar none. Amen. We are so blessed. I give honor to Calvary Tabernacle. I'm so glad to have them with us tonight. I told you, if you get here, I'll preach like I'm at Calvary, so I got to do it tonight. Amen, amen. You have your Bibles, I'll come and be coming from Acts 23, verses 12 through 14. I'm not going to bore you anymore and have you seated. Acts chapter 23, verses 12 through 14. And if it's okay with you, can I have my liberty? Can I preach like I'm at Calvary Tabernacle? If I do that, I probably preach good, and Mother Mangan will, will can I do it, Mother? Yes, ma'am. She says she's with me all the way. Acts chapter 23, I told the Lord that I would preach this message again and again and again and again. Because I believe this is a message that needs to get into the church. So I really want you to listen to me tonight. I really want you to take heed to what I'm about to tell you. Because I believe that your life will change forever. Not just saying that just to be saying it, but I believe this message is a message for the church. For those of you who are watching by way of the webpage. Please listen, God is going to bless you, your household, your ministry. Do you believe that tonight? In Jesus' name. The Bible reads, and when <clears throat> it was day, certain of the Jews band together. And they bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. Now that's some serious, serious stuff. They were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. They came to the chief priests and elders and, and said, we have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. I want to preach, treat, teach, however way the Spirit want to do it tonight to you on this subject, desperate pursuit. Desperate pursuit. Father, we love you, we praise and we thank you. I come again on bending knees, giving you glory. I ask for your spirit, O oh Lord God, to lead and guide me. Tonight, hide me behind the cross and speak to these great people that you ordained to be here today. For we don't want to hear from man at all today, but every word that comes from your presence. Speak, Lord, and we will listen. Speak, almighty oh God, and we will obey. I thank you for what you're about to do. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you give the Lord a big hand clap of praise? Come on, give him a hand clap of praise tonight. You may be seated. Bear with me. My speech is a little off. I'm voiced because I preached so hard at Calvary this morning. Jerry Rollins was there watching me, so I had to preach hard because he was there. So please bear with me tonight. When you read this story, I find that it's quite interesting. It's very deep, but there's a message in it for all of us. If I would take you back down memory lane, get you caught up with what's going on here. The Bible talks about how Paul entered back into Jerusalem. The prophet had already prophesied that when he get back there, what was going to happen to him. And surely he went into the temple and went through the purification process for seven days, but somewhere in the seven days, there were some Jews that had come and stirred up some mess pertaining to Paul, saying that he had preached against the temple, that he had preached against the people. The Bible said that they grabbed him and they threw him out of the temple. They began to stone him. In fact, the way the Bible says it is that they were planning on killing Paul that very day. But then the chief of the captains came, of the, of the soldiers came, and they he sent soldiers down to grab Paul and to bring him up a stairway up into a castle. And while that was happening, Paul beckoned to him that he may allow him to speak to the people. I don't know what kind of spirit was in Paul. It was a quite interesting spirit because when a group of people are getting ready to kill you and you still want to talk to them, something is going on. The Bible said he beckoned them. He stopped them from speaking because they were shouting out away with him, kill him, and so forth and so on. But once he opened his mouth, he spoke to them in Hebrew language, and it got their attention. And there he began to try to explain to them how he was just like them. That he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. That something happened. He, he became an insurrectionist. He changed because Jesus got a hold to him on the road to Damascus. He tells him and testifies about Ananias laying hands on him. And he goes on and on and on and on so, they could, uh, uh, so that he could try to get them to understand that he's not the bad guy. But the more he talked and the more he testified about it, at the end of it, they began to silence him. They didn't want to hear it anymore. And they began to yell at him. And the captain said, y'all get him and bring him on in the castle. Just get him and bring him in the castle. And they got him in the castle. The, they put him in a place. And, and when they put him in a place, the, 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 uh, the captain of the band, he said, let's just deal with it tomorrow. And we'll figure out what we can charge him with, how we can deal with this situation. Well, the next day, they bring him before the chief priest. And they bring him before the council. And when he gets there, he begins to talk to them, trying to reason with him. But in his speech, it was a little too strong to, well, he began to revile the high priest. And there, the high priest commanded a soldier to slap him in his mouth. And then he says, reviled thou the high priest of God. And he catches himself and because he's a man of God and he remembered the scriptures and he went back to the Old Testament and he even tells them after he realized that he was the high priest. He said, oh, I wist not, I knew not that he was the high priest. For it is written, he said, revile not. Boy, y'all gonna make me preach here tonight. But nevertheless, he then began to look at the council. He determined that one side of it was Pharisee and the other side was Sadducees. And there he spoke up and he said, I too am a Pharisee. And he began to explain to them, brothers, the reason why they have me here is because I believe in the gospel. I believe in the resurrection. I believe in spirits and I believe in angels and so forth and so on. And then there became a war between them and they begin to fight. And here we go all over again. They're mad at Paul. The captain has to come get him and take him to a place and put him up because it's not working. It's not working with these people. Something happened the next day. Paul nephew was there and he had gotten wind on what these men were planning on doing. They came to the high priest and they went to the high priest and said, hey, just ask the captain to bring Paul back here. And that when he brings him there, there's a group of us are waiting and we have brought a curse upon ourselves that we would neither eat 
nor drink until we kill him. Now I'm trying to take you into where I'm going with it. Such a strong spirit that they had a desperate spirit to pursue after Paul like that. It's a strong, strong spirit. Paul and nephew found out about it, went and told Paul, and Paul told the captain, and they protected him to make a long story short. But the message out of this is, is that these 40 men had such a strong spirit on them to pursue after something in somebody until they get it. That's the spirit that we've lost in the church. When you look at this word desperation, maybe this will help you. It's defined as this. It's having a great need or desire for something. And I want to take you into the type of spirit that they had. I want to take you into the spirit that we need, that we've lost in the church. They had a great need or a desire for something. Remember when you fell into Jesus your first time, you loved him, how you had a great desire and a great need for him that nothing mattered but Jesus Christ? It's someone who's hungry, who's itching, thirsty, craving, uh, dying for something. That's what, desperate, that's what desperate means. But then when you look at the definition of pursuit, it's defined as this. The action of following or pursuing someone or something is someone that's chasing after something. So when you put these two definitions together, this is what you get. It's someone who has an extreme hunger to get a hold of something that it is chasing. And it wants it so bad until it will stop at nothing until it gets it. Now listen, and listen carefully. It's going to take that type of spirit, the spirit of desperation, Coupled with pursuit to reach your destiny, to reach heaven, to move spirits, to reach a lost world. It's going to take the spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit to get you to your goal. If I had to give an example, it would be the example of the woman with the issue of blood. Spent everything that she had desperately pursuing after her healing tried this doctor she tried that doctor she went over here because somebody said that this would do it and she came to, she had a spirit of desperation and she pursued after what she wanted but she had the spirit of desperation in pursuing after something and she was doing it the wrong way until she ran across jesus one day the Bible say there was a multitude of people that was around him. She heard about what he could do. Something stirred up in her. That same spirit that she had, desperately seeking after people to heal her, it kicked in and it turned itself toward Jesus. Now she got it going in the right direction. She sees Jesus. There's a multitude of people that, how am I going to get to him? It's difficult. Can I go around this way? Can I? She finally, because of death, Desperation, pursuing after him. She finally pressed her way through and she touched the hem. She got desperate. She wanted it real bad. It's that kind of spirit that gets the attention of God because the moment she touched him, he said, who, who touched me? It was more than just a touch. It was a woman that had a spirit in her who desperately pursued after him. And that got his attention. That's why I was so great playing basketball. Because I had that same spirit, Pastor. I desperately pursued after the game. In the morning I played. I went to bed playing, thinking about it, playing basketball. All day, all night, all the time. I couldn't even think to study all I had on my mind, all I wanted to do was to play basketball. That same spirit that I had to play basketball, to pursue after the game, to learn about it, to give myself to it. God knew that if he would save me, that he would use that same spirit to reach the whole soul. See, Paul was trying to tell them this when he 
had, was put in jail and finally Festus couldn't do anything with him. So King Agrippa so happened to be, uh, uh, so happened to be coming by there. And, and the Bible said in Acts chapter 26, I want you to read this with me, verse 9. He said he began to testify, he began to talk to him. And he was trying to reveal something to King Agrippa. In fact, it was so strong that it almost caused him to be a Christian. He said, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He said, which things I also did in Jerusalem and many of the things did I, did I shut up in prison. Having received the authority from the chief priest and when they had put, they were put to death. He said, I gave my voice against him. He's trying to tell you what type of spirit he had in him and how desperately, how he was desperate about pursuing after the church and put them in prison. He said, I punished them often in every synagogue. I compelled them to blaspheme. And then he says it. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Don't you question my zeal that I had against the church. Don't you question how desperate I was to reach them and check them. Listen to me, I'm telling you, I was of that sect who had a spirit on them of desperation coupled with pursuit to destroy anything and everybody who spoke at and talked like they were part of Jesus' ministry. He said, whereupon I went to Damascus and with authority and commission from the chief priest. He said, in that midday, day, O king, I saw in the way of a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining around about me and them that journeyed with me. I wasn't by myself, somebody was with me. And, when, and then he said, and when we were all fallen to the earth, all of us, I heard a voice speaking unto me saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, mm. Why persecuted thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. I often ask myself the question when I hear this testimony that he's telling King Agrippa. Why Paul? Why did he select Paul? I'll tell you, it's because Paul had the spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit. Now let me pause to say this so that I make sure you hear me real well. It's that kind of spirit that gets God's attention. Got his attention. He kept his eyes on him the whole while. Although he had that kind of spirit on him because he thought he was fighting the law. He thought he was fighting for the law. He thought he was doing the right thing, which one would say that was a good spirit that he had. But because of his ignorance, he didn't know that he was fighting against God. But listen, and this is what I love about God. God can look at your situation or he can check out the way you used to be. Change you and fix you. Keep that same zeal and use it for his glory. Make me understand something. How can you have that kind of zeal for something in the world and then you come into church and shut it down? How can you desperately pursue after things you love so much and you wouldn't stop at nothing to get it? You would throw a tantrum if you can't get it. But then when you cross over and you come into the house of God, you sit on a pew like God hadn't done anything for you. Like he's not worthy. Somebody make me understand. It takes that kind of spirit. That kind of spirit to get God's attention. So what does he do? So what does he do? He saves him. <laughs> he saves him. The bright light shine. They all see the light, but only Paul get blinded by it. They hear the voice. Paul hear the voice, but only Paul goes to the street call straight. Why? Because it wasn't for them. They didn't have the same kind of spirit that Paul had in him. So he peeled them apart, blinded Paul, sends it to Ananias. Ananias lay hands on him. He gets filled with the spirit of God. And then he said, now get on back out there on the battlefield, on the right side, and give me the same thing. Once you get this revelation, once you understand what I'm telling you, then you will understand why Paul stated these words. He said, and I quote, follow me 
while I follow Christ. My spirit that I, he said that desperate the way I desperately pursue after him. He taught this to the church. He said, I know what gets his, his attention. I know how we can reach a harvest. I know how you can get your blessings. He said, when you desperately pursue after the things of God. Let me help you out. Satan knows that if he can put your fire out, if he can get you to become lazy, if he can, he, the spirit of slumber this can come upon you. To where you no longer have any get up and go. We call it uh, in us for the kingdom of God, the things of God. I can't tell you how many people are heavy laden, weary, burdened down and tired. I cannot. I know what the problem is. Not that the message that's coming across the pulpit is not getting you. It's just that these spirits have weighed you down. Situations have way beaten you down and you've gotten to focus. And what it was designed to do was to put that fire that was in you at the beginning out. No one had to motivate you and should lead you to go reach people. You did it naturally. You desperately pursued after the things of God. You knew God was reaching lost souls. You knew why God saved you so you can go reach others. But somewhere you allowed something to put your fire out. Somewhere you've lost your zeal. You've lost it. See, I had to pray to God to ask God to help me. So I wouldn't lose my mind pastoring a group of people because I couldn't understand why people won't go out and reach those people. He saved me so that I can go out and reach others. He, he put in me what he put in me so I can put in others. He helped me so I can go and help others. He delivered me so that I can use the glory and power that he's given me to go and deliver others. I, I cannot understand that. I desperately, me, through my own life, I desperately pursued after Christ. I pursued after him when I was on the bridge. When he pushed me back and I began to worship him and adore him after he saved my life. He began to speak to me. I know he did. and was sending me to hear it long. And I desperately pursued after him, following after him when he led me to the Hurry Long Hospital. There I was there and I didn't know what I was doing there and I was waiting and just what is God saying and then I could hear someone talking on the phone. I got up and desperately pursued the woman. Ma'am give me the number. I heard you talk about a homeless shelter. Then I called Jerry Rollins. He answered the phone. When Jerry answered the phone he hung the phone up in my face because he was talking. He had some other stuff going on. He told me to call him back. It wasn't important. But after I got off the phone with him the spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit came on me something say how bad do you want it pick back up that phone see you gotta get the how bad do you want it spirit in you if you want your house delivered how bad do you want it if you want to see your child saved how bad do you want it if you want your healing how bad do you want it you want to see mountains move how bad do you want it I picked back up that phone. Desperation coupled with pursuit came on me. Jerry, he answered the phone. I said, Jerry, I said, Jerry, my name is John Russell. I talked to you earlier. He said, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you to come? I said, but you don't understand. And it kicked it. I said, I'm on drugs. I need help. I said, I'm an addict. I'm about to die. I said, help me. Desperation. It got his attention. It moved him. He said, who you say your name was again? I said, John Russell, and I need help. That's when he led me here to this place. And the rest is history. Went from a bridge. <laughs> That's right. Went from a bridge. Went to the hospital. And went and took that spirit of desperation even in the grace house. What happened? Let me tell you. I came in among you ignorant and didn't know nothing. Dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> Had no knowledge of God. Just a little, just a little. I could almost quote John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, and I even got that wrong. Every now and then I stumble over Psalms 23, for the Lord is my shepherd. And every now and then I had that scripture in mind to pray our Father's prayer, the prayer, our Father which are in heaven. That was it. But I was wrapped up in a world, consumed by a world, and I came right here and I sat among you. I was in the grace house. We call it the schoolhouse. I got my BA in theology at the grace house. 
from the word of God. I did. Sat there. We didn't have computers. Jerry gave us the Bible and we had an old Concordian book and I got a piece of paper and a, and a dictionary and that's how I started learning the word of God. That spirit got upon me. I started watching you and I started seeing how you had a zeal for God. And, and I looked and saw how the Mangans would pray and how I saw how you would run around the church and how you would testify. I'm telling you, it was contagious. You used to have that zeal. No one could touch you. Everyone wanted to be like you, including me. Got in there and I said, how can I be like them? I saw the men walk out. They would sit on a platform and I would see them come out. I said, whoa, God, those men are holy. Larry Clark and Don Lone and many others would come out. And I'm like, wow. They all had a zeal. Pastor would testify how Larry would teach Bible study, Bruce Milder. And I said, I got to get close to these men. I want what's on them. I want it on me. Let, let me help somebody right now. Find somebody who's on fire. Find somebody who got a zeal for God. Get a hold to their coattail. Hold on to it. Never let them go. Ride it, ride it, and ride it. Look at somebody. High five them and say, I want what you got. I want what you got. I want what you got. Hey. It changed me. It changed me. And I still have that zeal today. I never forget. I never forget. I was working at Diamond B Construction. Lord, I don't even have enough time to preach all this. I got so much stuff here to preach. I'll give you a little bit of it. I never forget. I was working at Diamond B Construction. And, and I just, I told Rolanda, I said, I just feel led. We need to go sit at the feet of the bishop. I said, I went home, got dressed, put on me a whole suit. My wife and family got dressed. Terrell and Candy, they were little. And we walked in. I didn't know anything about setting appointments and all that stuff. I told you I was dumb as a box of rocks back then. But I had a little bit of knowledge. And then we just got up and came on over to the office over there. And I just asked, I said, hey, we, we need to see the bishop. Somehow they got with Judy. Judy called him back. He told us to come on back. We went back to his office. Pastor didn't even know this until he, until he bust in on us in the office. When he came in, he saw us sitting at the feet of Bishop. And we were sitting at his feet. He reached in the drawer and grabbed a book. And it was an old book that he had. And he began to take me back down memory lane, me and my family, when him and his family first came to this city. He told me how God gave him a zeal and a desire and a burning passion to reach the African-American community. He began to weep and speak in tongues and he began to impart in me a spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit. He said, John Russell, you have to reach the African-American com community. That's what he said to me. It was personal. Nothing personal to you. It was personal to me. My family, we begin to weep and we begin to bawl. You can feel the spirit of God move, move through him and in me to where that zeal and that desire that your father had that he placed in me. Don't ever question why I do what I do. I have a love for lost souls no matter what color they are. But listen to me and listen to me carefully. I thank God that I sat at the feet of these men. It changed my life. It changed my life. I heard somebody say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I believe in this. I love this. I live this. And I thank God for this. Can I get a witness in the heart? I still have that zeal. Jesus said these words, and they were so profound in Matthew 5 and 6. He said, blessed are they that do hunger. And thirst after righteousness. They, they have a hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. You cannot have a spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit and God don't satisfy you. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? If I can get this spirit stirred up in you, if I can get this back in you, all of your desires will be satisfied. Uh, that's, that's one thing that I know that Satan cannot stand someone who act like Paul. He can't stand someone who act like Jesus. He can't stand someone who have that kind of pursuit coupled with desperation inside of them. He cannot stand. It. Now, let me get to this. There are several things that we uh, should have a desperate pursuit for. I want you to hear me and hear me carefully. There are several things that we should have a desperate pursuit for. And one of them, Pastor, has been talking about. One of them you've prayed about. And that is deliverance in our homes. Deliverance in our homes. Satan has targeted our homes. He has targeted our children. 
He has targeted our marriages. He has targeted our finances. He's messing with our homes. And listen to me. And I know why. If he can disturb your home, he can disturb your faith. If he can disturb your home, and if you're like me, I love my home. I love my children. I love my wife. And devil, you, 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 know, you know, don't mess with my family. You know, don't, don't, if, if you want to break me down, if you want to try to break me down, pick on my family. But I thank God for strong faith. And, and I understand that the enemy doesn't play fair. But that's some of you, you might not be strong enough to handle this, but that's why I come to preach to you that I got to get you back going and get your motor back running again and get your zeal back going. And you got to get up and fight. Stop laying down and letting the devil walk over you. And you take back what the enemy has taken from you. You put your guards back up and you get to fight and tell the devil that you won't take this anymore. Get your hands out of my marriage. Leave my child alone. Begin to pursue after God. You got to do something. You got to do something. You just can't sit there and the devil and wrap havoc all in your house and say, devil, get out of my house, please. No, no. Devil, leave me alone, please. No, no. He's laughing at you. That's not how you do it. Well, preacher, will you please tell me how to do it? Well, I sure will tell you how to do it. And I'm glad you asked. I see now I haven't got out of my jacket yet. Now, I don't know if you know what this means. When I get out of my jacket, y'all in trouble. Where's my towel at? He took my towel too, didn't he? Where is it at? I dropped it. Get it. <laughs> Let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you how you do it. Remember the Syrophoenician woman? Remember that woman? The Bible said that she came to Jesus. Listen to me. And when she came to Jesus, she said, Lord, have mercy on me. And she tells him why. She said, have mercy on me, thou son of David. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> she said, because my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. You want me to translate that? My house need deliverance. That's an enemy that has crept in. Done put his hands on my daughter. And Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me. Watch this, watch this. She's a Syrophoenician woman. And she come to the right place, but she have a problem. And the problem is this. When she comes to him and she say, have mercy on me. The Bible said that he's a merciful God for those who call upon him. But when this Syrophoenician woman calls upon him, the Bible said that he did not say a mumbling word to her. And if that don't beat all, the Bible said that his disciples, they went to Jesus and told Jesus to get her away from us. She cried after us. She had a double whammy in her life. One, Jesus didn't say anything to her. And two, they trying to get rid of her. She had a dilemma. She had a serious dilemma. Who do you go to to get deliverance in your home? When you go to Jesus and he don't help you out. He didn't answer her one word. So what does she do? The spirit of desperation kicks in, coupled with pursuit. She just didn't let him get away that easy. So what does she do? She fall down on her knees at his feet. And the Bible says she begin to worship him. And she said, help me, help me, help me. She kept on going. She didn't see, see some of you, when Jesus ignore you, you get off the boat with Jesus right then and there. Let you ask him a prayer and he don't answer it. Some of you would drop him like a hot bag of potatoes. Because you have no fight in you. That zeal, that desperate pursuit is no longer in us anymore. Well, I prayed, but nothing happened. Well, I did this, but nothing happened. Well, she called on him and he didn't answer one word. In fact, he started talking to his disciples and said, listen, he said, he said, it is not good that I would take the bread from the children and toss it to the dogs. No, 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 no. That's, a, that's some strong, 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 strong stuff. There. So she began to worship him. She began to worship him. She takes it to a whole nother level. Listen to me. Listen to me. If when you cry out to him and he don't hear you, 
Just take it to another level and take it to a level with worship. Worship got his attention. When she worshiped, it got his attention. It got his attention and he had to respond to a worshiper. See, there's some of you, you hadn't tapped into worship. That's deep admiration toward God, for God. That's when you release it and let it all go. When you adore him, magnify him. You don't care who's around, you just get. I'm talking about worship. When they begin to play the music, you go on. You don't need pastor to chill lead you into the presence of God because of who he is and what he is. You can go back and remember how good he is and what he's done in your life. You just begin to worship him naturally. And there's something about the aroma of worship. When it goes up to God, it moves him. When he wasn't talking to you, then he will talk to you. I wish I could talk to three so people. If I can get you to understand the power of your worship. I didn't say their worship. I said the power of your worship. It'll get his attention. You don't have to wait till you come to church. Worship him in your car. You don't have to wait till you get to the prayer room. Worship him in the bathroom. Worship him in the shower. Worship him on your job. Can I get a witness? Let him ask you, what's wrong with you? I just got a worshiping spirit. I need deliverance in my home. And I know if I worship him, I'll get his attention. That's it, that's it, that's it. I know what he's doing. He's trying to see how bad you want deliverance in your house. You want to see how bad do you want it? She shows him how bad. She shows him how bad. After he worships, she says that. She said, that is not me to take bread from the land and give to the dogs. Now watch this. He ignores her and doesn't give her an answer. And then the disciples want to get rid of him. And then if that don't beat all, he insults her by calling her a dog. Now watch this. How many blows can you take from Jesus? Watch this. We think that he's being mean. We think that he's not hearing us. We think that he don't have it. He knows what you have need of before you even ask him. We think that he's insensitive. We think that he just don't care. We think that he's like other gods. He's sleeping or he's just dead wood. He don't have any life in it. No, 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 no. Not my God. My God is alive, able, and ready to do exceedingly and abundantly above. Oh. Oh, I wish I had a few people that can testify. Oh, I wish I had a few people that can testify about it. I wish I had somebody that can testify about it. So he insults her. He calls her a dog. He's not good. And she takes it to another level of desperation. Most people would take the insult. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You ignored me. Y'all don't want me. And then you call me a dog. Okay, Jesus, forget it. I, I, I don't want your God. Watch this. Because if I have to go through that to get what I need, then I don't want it. Now let me pause here and remind you of something. You went through worse than that, pursuing after something you wanted. You did. You were willing to do anything. You was willing to sacrifice anything. And now he makes you wait a little bit. Or he ignores you just for a day or two. And you lose it. Settle down. How we say it on the streets? Chill out. He got you. It's going to be all right. Watch this. Let him wind the clock up in you. Let, let him get the spirit of desperation. I, I, I want to see do you want me and how bad do you want me? What, 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 what. I love corporate prayer, right? And I love it when people praying and everybody praying and that's fine. And, but it's something about you praying individually by yourself getting to God. It's 
one thing when you lay hands on me and get around me and shoot shoot boo boo hoo hoo and all that stuff right there but it's another thing when I get here by myself it's just me and God and I have to get a spirit on me of desperation coupled with pursuit and I got to generate I got to get into the presence of God by myself watch this when the last time you got in his presence by yourself Now, now, I didn't come here with all this. I got to get you out of here, Pastor, looking at the clock. I didn't come here with all this here. I told you I had it. Well, good help me, Jesus. So finally, she said something. She said, she agreed with him. She said, true, Lord. She said, true, Lord. She said, but even the dogs get the crumbs from their master's table. Now, when she made this statement, she blew him away. She, he said after that, he said, oh, woman, great is thy faith. Now, that's a whole other level right there. Because somehow, he's got desperate pursuit, and he's attached faith to it. Now, you understand when I say that if I can disturb the home, I can disturb the faith. But he never disturbed the woman's faith. She kept the spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit. And she kept going no matter what Jesus said, no matter what Jesus did. She said, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to ring this bell until I get what I need. I want deliverance from my children. I want deliverance in my marriage. I want deliverance in my home. And I know you are the deliverer. You can make it happen. I'm going to keep on worrying you. I'm going to keep on pursuing after you. I'm going to keep on ringing your bell. I'm going to keep on pray you can ignore me you can talk about me you can do what you want but I'm still going to pursue after you Jesus I'm still going to pursue after you Jesus I got so much I, I, I just don't have time to preach it all it have to be a part two or a part three. Give me a little music. I, I got to shut it down. I got three, four notes, three, three four more things, but I, I can't give it to you. I got I to gotta jump on to something else. I got I to gotta help you out. These two women, the Syrophoenician woman got my attention, but then this Shunammite woman, this, this Shunammite woman, the, the second and final thing that I'm going to hit you with that you're going to have to have the spirit of pursuit coupled with desperation or desperation coupled with pursuit with is the promises of God. Listen to pastor, okay? There are some things that God has promised you. The Bible says God is not a God that he would lie. The promises of God is yay. If God promised you something, you can take it to the bank. You guys, spiritually, have been grafted in to the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are part of the fold. We are part of the flock. We get all of the promises of God. They are yours. And, but there are certain things and some promises you have to pursue God after. This woman, this Shunammite woman is a perfect example. When you go back and study her history, you would find that she was a great woman, the Bible said. Thank you. Thank you. She was a great woman. She was a woman of great stature. She was not some Rudy Poo. She was well known, her and her husband. They, they were well off. They had fields and they had servants. And she was a mighty woman. You, you, you ought to go do your uh, history on her. But one day, the prophet Elisha was coming by and she, she decided to feed him. She was in the habit of feeding the prophet. She would feed him bread. He would stop by. Then one day, she talked to her husband and she said, I perceive that this man is a, is a, is a holy man. He's a godly man. And she had this great idea. She said, she said, honey, she said, why don't we add on to our house? Build him a, a little room with a bed in it and a table and a chair and a, and a ladder in so that when he travels and he come by, not only can we feed him, but we can also lodge him. She was taking her service to a whole nother level. It's one thing to give me bread, but it's another thing to give me a place to lay my head. I can stay there and preach all day right now. It's one thing to render your service and be kind and it's feeding my belly. But it's another thing when I'm traveling and, I'm, and I'm, I need a place to rest and lay my head. And you decide to spend your money to put your nails and to buy furniture for me? Wow. 
So he stopped by our house one day. And him and Gehazi was together. And he was laying back in the bed. And while he was laying back in the bed, he said, Gehazi! <laughs> oh boy, y'all gonna make me preach for real. I don't have time to do this. You got a little time? He said, what is it that we can do for this woman? Because she is so kind and so good to us. Just laying there thinking about the goodness of that woman. There's one thing about goodness and kindness. You don't have to sell it. It sells itself. <laughs> that people recognize real people. They recognize people who really care and want to help them. You don't have to ring a bell for them. You don't have to go tell anybody to go tell them. It's something about kindness when it comes upon you. It speaks something to you. It reminds you of where the kindness comes from. He said, what, 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 he said what, what can we do for her? Because she's been so good, so kind to us. He said, call her here and call her here. And when he, he called her, he said, you go and, and, and talk to her and, and find out. And, and see if that she would like to go and, and be with the king. Or shall I put a word in to the captains and just... Check it out. And she said, no. She said, no. She said, I don't want to go and be up there with all them fancy folks. No, I don't want to do that. She said, I want to stay right here in my own country. I like that. Because, see, this man had power to put her in high places. See, what I love about this woman, she didn't use her service to, get, to climb the ladder to get into high places. There was something really special about this woman. Some of you would have took the ticket and said, yeah, can you get me in with the game? Sure. But not this moment. She said, nah, I'd rather be here. And he said, but, but what is it that we can do for her? What, what? And Gehazi, he noticed, he said, wait a minute. He said, her husband is old. And, and I don't see any little rug rats running around here. He said, call her here at the door. And he began to speak a word. He said, this time next year, you're going to have a child. Watch the prophetic goes forth. Watch this. Watch this. He speaks something. He promised her something. She said, no, 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 it's a done deal. Time went by. The child came just like he said. God's a promise keeper. He's going to keep his word. If the prophet spoke it, it's a done deal. The Bible said the child got up of age and he ran out into the fields and somewhere he hurt his head and he ran to his daddy, daddy, my head, my head, my head, my head, my head. He was in tremendous pain. He was hurting real bad. Sometimes when you're in pain and you run to the father, they can't give you what a, mother's can, what a mother can give you. The father knew it. I preached a message for Mother's Day titled The Comfort of a Mother. You can run to the father, but there's certain things that your daddy can't give you that your mama can. All right. Oh boy. All right. That's why Satan has kept men back from their mothers. Because there's something in your mama that can help save you. That's a whole other message, Pastor. So the father said, hey, send him to his mama he goes back to his mother my head my head she takes him and she sits him on her lap and she comforts the boy like a mother would she comforted him but this particular day her comfort wasn't enough to save him the bible said the boy died right there in her arm let me just give you the translation it was a promise that had died in her lap now my God don't operate like that. When he gives you a promise, a promise lives. The child dies. She nerves the child and he dies. That's not the way it's supposed to be. God, you put something in me to nourish my child, to comfort my child, to be with my child, to take care of my, and he dies and on top of that, you gave him to me. I didn't ask for him. I didn't ask for him at all she does she remembered watch this where the promise come from she said wait a minute didn't I build him a room she takes the child she lays him in the prophet's bed now how you gonna eat today and how you gonna sleep today until you fix this problem he lays she lays him there 
she goes out to the field and she gets with her husband she said husband she said listen watch this the spirit of desperation is kicking in it's winding up she's got a situation and watch this she's not going to accept no for an answer she said listen she said I need you to give me a horse and give me a servant I said, I got to go see the man of God, is what she said. He said, wait, he said, what's going on? He said, is it the new moon? Watch this, is it Sunday? Is it the Sabbath? Is it time for church? Why are you calling the man of God? What's happening? She said, and she said, it's all right. Everything is all right. She said, it's all right. Watch this. So when she get, the Bible says she sat on her ass. She did. She's getting stuff and she put it. She said, the servants are getting ready. Her, her spirit is moving. Why? Because I got to go find the man who made the promise. She didn't just let the child sit here and say, oh, well, that's it. No, she fought for it. Zeal kicked in. She sat on the ass. But watch this. She tells the servant something that blew my mind. She said, Listen to me. She said, You go. And she said, You ride. She said, You pursue. You go. And she said, Don't you slow down and hold for me unless I tell you to. See, that's what I love about somebody who have a spirit of desperation on them, coupled with pursuit. That if you're around them, they'll, they'll start your motor to run too. She said, you ride, and you ride, and don't you stop for me. She said, I got to get there. So while she's riding, Gehazi and the prophet, they look up, and the prophet said, hey, Gehazi, isn't that that Shunammite woman? And he said, go see what she wants. She gets off the ass. And he said something to her. He said, my master want to know is, is all well with you? Then he said, it's all as well with your husband? And I find it interesting, he waited and he asked the woman, is all as well with the promise? With the child? Find it interesting. Because surely, surely the promise is okay. She tells the Gehazi, she said, she said, all is well. She, she runs and she gets to the prophet. And mother, what she did, she took it to a whole other level. The Bible says she fell down at his feet. She grabbed him. It startled Gehazi. Gehazi didn't know what to do. He, he tried to grab her, but she was so into it. To the prophet said, stop it, stop it, stop it. Her spirit is vexed. If God hadn't told me what it is, he said, leave her alone. He said, this is something different here. This is a whole nother level. Look how she rode. Look at her demeanor. Check out her position. There's something going on here. That's a spirit of desperation on her. Something is going on. I got to find out what it is. Oh, I would to God that you would get like this sooner, my woman. I would to God that you would get like this sooner, my woman, for your issues and your problems. Here's what got me, Pastor. And I know I got to get out of here. I'm so sorry. Will you please forgive me? Here's what got me. She didn't even tell him what the problem was. Her answers were all as well. So what does he do? He tells Gehazi. Not knowing that the promise was dead, he said, take my staff, and if somebody salutes you, do not greet them back. He said, if somebody talk to you, don't you say nothing. He said, you take my staff, and you place it on the face of the child. And I pause and ask you a question again. How did he know when she said, all is well? How did he? How did he know? Nevertheless, she said, sure as the Lord liveth, and sure as your soul liveth today, she said, I would not leave your side. The Bible says she began to walk, and he followed her. Go read it for yourself. We got a problem. My home need fixing. We got a problem. The promise is gone. Come on, prophet. The Bible said when he got back there, come on, you know the story. He walked in, the Bible said, listen, just him and the child was in there. 
Bible said his mouth was on his mouth. His eyes was on his eyes. He got on and his hands was on his hand. And he laid on the child. And the Bible said that the child's body began to get warm. How do we get to that point? How do we get from a dead body to a warm body? Because there was a spirit of desperation in one woman. She didn't need her husband to join in with her. She did it by herself. She didn't need to call a clan. No, she did it by herself. Bible said he got up and he began to pace it. He walked the floor and what's going on, Nick? I no, no, this is a promise. I, this is not right. And on top of that, he's laying in my bed. And uh, things can't operate the way they can. I saw this woman's spirit vexed and she had a spirit of desperation on him and you said them that pursue after you and follow after righteousness that you shall fill them and get, take care of their thirst and then he gets back on the child <laughs> and when he lays on that child again the Bible says the child sneezed seven times and his eyes open and she took the promise alive watch this and gave it back to a woman who had the spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit in her life. You listen to me. This is powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. And we got to get back to that kind of spirit. Satan has took his game to a whole nother level. And what you did yesterday was not working today. We got to take it to another level. We got to take it to a whole nother level. Here's what I'm afraid of and I'm out of here. Here's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that we're gonna wait till it's too late, Pastor. Pastor, I don't know if you remember Harvey. He was a Grace House man, he was a great cook. We used to love his cooking, Pastor. That man was a master chef, I don't know if you remember him. I think he cooked for you maybe one time, some alligator or something, he was from down So You remember who he was? Pastor, do you know that me and that guy were real close at the Grace House? He left out, he made some mistakes and he left out, Pastor. We were always worried about Harvey. Where's Harvey? Where's Harvey? Somebody find Harvey. He's a good man. You know, it's just some people that come in are good people. They might not have their stuff together, but they're good people. He was a good man. And I was worried about him. And I had moved out of the Grace House and started working with Diamond B. And while I was working in the shop around there, Jean Ball Drive, I talked to his sister a couple of times and she had been praying for him and she had been witnessing to him and, and so forth and so on. And, 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 and um, I, didn't, I didn't know, you know, that uh, she had been witnessing to him and that the night before what I'm about to tell you that he had already made up his mind to do something. But I was working at Diamond B and when I was in the shop, I heard a boom, boom. And, and, and we, we, we looked out of the shop and we saw a vehicle up the road and we ran out of the shop and we ran. We knew somebody had an accident and, and we got toward the vehicle and I looked and I saw the car and ran into a pole. And, you know who it was, Pastor? It was Harvey, man. It ran into a pole. Looked at him, Pastor. He lifeless and died, man. I said, oh, Lord. I said, Lord, that's Harvey. I said, that's Harvey. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I was like, oh, Lord. That's Harvey. That's Harvey. That's God. God. He was right there with us. I said, oh, Lord. That's Harvey. I said, oh, Lord. It messed me up, y'all. It, it just really messed me up. And I finally talked to his sister. And she told me, she said, John, she said, when you saw him, he was on his way back to the grace. A spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit came upon him. After she had witnessed to him, he had made up his mind that he was going back to the grace house. But on his way back, and this is what I'm afraid of, that happened. Remember the ten versions? The five that was wise, the four, and the five that was not wise. The five that were wise had their lamp, their oil ready to go. When the trumpet sounded, the master is coming. Come on, enter in. Come on, you guys are ready. And they enter in. But the five foolish, watch this, and this is what I'm afraid of. They're going to wait till it's too late to try to get desperate to pursue after God. You know what they did? They realized that they didn't have any oil. In. So desperation with couple with pursuit kicked in. They started getting that. Oh, I gotta get some more. I gotta get some more. It's kicked in. Oh, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. Too late. 
couldn't get any man. And that's what I'm afraid of for the church that you're going to wait too late. I would to God that every soul listening to my voice, for them that are on the web page, for you that are listening to me here, I wish that, that God would stir something up in you. That you would begin to pursue after God. Spirit of desperation like you've lost your mind. In his word, you would pursue after him. Fasting, you would pursue after him. Lost souls, you would pursue after him. The harvest, the harvest, you would pursue after him. I would. Best. We just can't do it by ourselves. We keep preaching it to you, but listen to me. Listen to me. Bishop said something to me and I got to go. I got to go. Bishop said something to me. He said to me, he said, John Russell, he said, there's no way I can go to heaven. Empty handed, he said. He said, there's no way. He said, I got to take somebody to him. And he said, the only thing that God has taken is lost souls. And I got to get them and I got to lay them at his feet. That was his goal. He said, I got to reach them. I got to get them. You can't do that. Doubt. Spirit of desperation coupled with pursuit you just can't do it so it's my prayer tonight that I can cover you tonight if you would stand just for a moment I want to cover you tonight and I want to ask God to put this spirit in you that's in the mangans the spirit that's in you put the spirit in you that's in our leaders we have it in us and that's what we've been trying to get in you if you can get this in you you don't need us you can get it yourself go home and take authority over your own home Start in your cars when you leave here and take it home. Anoint your own home. Pray, put, your, put your armor back on and start fighting. Tell the devil he is alive. Spirit of desperation. Lift your hands toward heaven right now. Come on, every eye closed. Ask God to forgive you right now. Lord, I've lost my zeal, my fire. I'm weighed down. A lot of things are troubling me and bothering me, God. It has put my fire out. In fact, I depend on other people to do what you told me to do, oh Lord God. Take that spirit out of me right now, Lord God. Stop my fire. Start a fire inside of me, oh God. Let me get like the prophet said, burns inside of me. Oh God, every hand raised, every soul, oh God. Start my fire tonight, oh Lord God. Let that be a zeal, oh Lord God. Come upon me. Let it be a zeal, oh Lord God. Not my will, but thy will, oh Lord God. Start with me. I got to fight for my family. I got to fight for my children. I got to fight for my marriage. I got to fight for my home. I got to fight. No longer will I trust anything. Put it in me. Let it get in me right now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Come on, you gotta do it yourself. You gotta show God how bad you want it. He don't hear me preach, I keep pressing. He don't hear me preach, I keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. How long, preacher? I don't know. Just keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Don't give up, oh God. He didn't give up on you. I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. God, you're going to deliver. God, you're going to heal them, oh Lord. Some of you throw it in the towel. Pick it up. Pick it up. I'm not giving up. The spirit of death is coming upon you right now I'm gonna pursue after I'm gonna go get my promise I'm gonna make him give me my promise come on let the spirit move all on you right now that's God moving on you right now that's the spirit of God convicting you right now that's it let it move on you right now I can feel him stirring it up in the spirit right now get the fire back get the fire back that's it that's it that's it, that's it. I don't want to sit on you, God. You didn't sit on me, God. I don't want to quit on you, God. You didn't quit on me, God. Chasing after you. Chasing after you. 
Don't you let your child go by the wayside. Don't you let the devil have your children. Do something about it. Come on, his glory is all over this house. His presence is all over. The spirit is speaking. And the spirit speak expressly. Hear me, hear him. Hear what the spirit is saying to you today. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want that mountain to move? How bad do you want the enemy out of your life? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it, POA? How bad do you want it, Tabra? Come on. What I, what I was doing wasn't working. I got to take it to another level. If what I was doing is not enough, I have to take it to another level. I refuse to let the enemy win. Victory is mine, said the Lord. Victory is mine, said the Lord. Go back and take everything that the cake of worm has stolen from you. God said you're blessed in the city. You're blessed going out and you're blessed coming in. Hey, I want it, God. I want it, God. Hey, that's it. That's it. Pursue after him. That's it. That's it. Pursue after him right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Chains are being broken right now. That's it. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. That's it. Tear down the walls. Tear down the walls. Speak those things that are not as though they were. Call it into, call it into life right now. Pull it to you by faith. Come on here, child. Come on here, child. Get out of that world, child. Pull it, call it, bring it to you right now in the name of Jesus. You got the power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I speak blessings upon every soul tonight. We thank you for your mighty word tonight. In the name of Jesus, a zeal, God, a zeal. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Come on, get your fire. Man. Just because he hit you with a blow, it don't mean anything. Just because he hit you with a blow, it don't mean anything. Get back up and fight. Get back up and fight for what's yours. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you. May God bless you.
he does not stop Psalm 19 verse 1 Psalm 19 verse 1 the heavens declare the glory of God he does not stop with what's in the earth he moves to the heavens and one of the greatest symbols he's given us in the heavens is the Sun the S-U-N explains the S-O-N Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 for our God is a consuming fire what is the Sun it's a ball of fire now watch this where I come from originally Martha's Vineyard they have beautiful beaches and so they have what they call sun worshipers these are people that go to the beach and lay out before the Sun see to be a worshiper even the world understands it they call them Sun worshipers and this is the requirement you must go out from protection and expose yourself to the Sun to worship then you must expose yourself and lay down before the Sun until the Sun changes you you don't have to tell somebody you don't have to ask somebody if you've been in the Sun the same token you can tell somebody when they've had a lot of Sun you can tell them you can especially in the winter months you don't have to wonder if they stayed here in Wisconsin where'd you go because the Sun has transformed their image literally their looks it transform and that's why when you're a true sun worshiper you will come out from the protective covering of the world that shields you from the love of God you will begin to peel off your armor and expose yourself to God you will lay down before God until God changes you and a true sun worshiper doesn't just lay on his back he flips over and lays on his stomach because he wants to change all the way around